so let's get this started. First off, welcome back everyone who's decided to stick with me through my really long upload break. I really just needed some time to myself for the past couple months. Like I said in my last video, going through a lot of stuff lately. And I just really got burnt out with doing scrolls and videos, so I just needed to take some time for me. But I feel like I'm starting to come back to myself and getting back into the swing of things. What I'm doing today is I'm doing a study of the photo Creased Sea by Warren Keelan. I've been wanting to expand my horizons, so that's why I went for something completely different than what I normally do. Doesn't mean I'm never going to do scrolls, because that's still a big part of who I am and what I like to do. I just want to add a little bit more variety to my channel, so it's not always just the same old, same old with illumination and calligraphy, illumination and calligraphy. So, 100 subscribers. Uh, Wow, is all I can say. I, I know people say this a lot, but honestly, thank you guys for, for subscribing, reaching out to me, all of your positive comments and feedback. It really means a lot. So thank you so much for that. I really, I really hope to be providing some more content this year, more videos, and actually really hoping to do some tutorials. I'd like to do some tutorials on how to properly mix period pigments, um, make period ink, what kind of papers I use, just just sort of things like that. So let me know if you guys are interested in something like that or if there's anything that you'd like to see come forward this year. So right now I'm just basing out the main colors of the photo itself just to give me something to work from. As you can see, I did do a, I did do a light sketch. I did that in watercolor pencil just so that when I did go over it with the watercolor, I wouldn't see the harsh graphite lines underneath. I found this really challenging because I'm tr I try not to use white watercolor paint. I just don't think it looks that great. It kind of gives it kind of a muddy texture. But I'm also not that great with my shading just yet and leaving the white spaces. So later on in this video, there is some white paint that does come into the mix. Oh no, I hear some of you saying, but I think it turned out fairly well. And instead of watercolor paint, for the white. I ended up using white gouache just to give it a little bit more of a of an opacity that I was lacking from the watercolor. This part down at the bottom was one of the most difficult parts of this of this study. The paper just kept peeling up and I wasn't able to layer the colors correctly. It just wasn't it wasn't as dark as I needed it to be in certain places. And I just I just don't think I did as good of a job on that part as I could have. I still think it turned out fine, but that's why it's a study. So I can learn from those mistakes and in the future improve upon my work. I decided to do water and a wave because I grew up next to the ocean side. I live in Nova Scotia, Canada, so I was about five minutes away from the ocean. I could see it from, from my porch, and it's just been a big part of my life. I did lifeguarding as one of my first jobs. I worked at a beach. And then when I went to when I went to university, I studied environmental science and marine biology. So it's just been something that is important to me, and I just felt inspired to start painting this. So I really hope you guys like it, and I hope that it that it speaks to you in a way. I just there's just so many ripples to water, and it changes. It's it can be soft, but it can also be hard and strong sometimes. It water never relents, and that's something that I've been I've been needing to focus on lately, and needing to focus on even though there's bad that I just gotta keep pushing through sometimes and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So the colors that I'm using today are colors that I had originally mixed up myself. I 
have tubed watercolor, which is what I prefer. And I have an empty half pan set, so whenever I get a new tube, I can squeeze it into there and let it dry and then be able to just pick that color up whenever I want it. Since this painting had so many different shades of blue, I wanted to make sure that I would have enough of those colors to finish the entire painting. So what I did is I grabbed some of my empty half pans and I mixed up the color in those half pans with a little toothpick. So that way they could dry down and if I needed to stop, I'd still have that color and I wouldn't have to worry about trying to mix the exact same color every single time. It turned out all right. I didn't mix one of my colors as well as I wanted to, so it was a really nice, a nice sea green that I had started with, which you actually don't see in this painting really much at all, because I kind of just use it to glaze over some things. But by the by, by like part way through the pan, I got to like this random spot of violet that hadn't gotten mixed in properly. So I don't know if that shows up in the video at all, but I noticed it, and it was just really. It's kind of disappointing, so I'm going to have to get better on my mixing skills, or I'm just going to have to buy the paint colors that I want. Overall, I think this painting turned out well for a first try. It's technically not my first try. I did do a previous wave painting, and it was way simpler than this. I actually don't have a video of it, but here's a clip of here, here's a picture of the finished product now. The most difficult part for this was the highlights. I honestly got to say just not having good highlights. Really really it's really difficult for water because water is all the same color and it relies on the highlights and shadows to show you the depth and show you show you its movement so I think one of the things I'm gonna have to work on is doing those highlights better and and layering a little bit better so I'm sorry if I'm a little bit rambly during this voiceover I I just got off work so I'm a bit tired right now but I wanted to make sure that I got a video posted this weekend. It's, it's been a long time coming. I'm using a much thinner brush now than what I was doing before because as the perspective deepens, so as I get further away from where the water starts, I start to get a little bit more details because the perspective is focusing on the back, on the backmost waves rather than the frontmost waves. If you'll notice, the the frontmost wave is really, really blurry, for lack of a better term, and that's actually on purpose. Here, you can see me finishing everything off. Um, I have a jelly roll there. I was really just trying to get some good highlights in there because my white just wasn't cutting it for me. I kind of wish I didn't use this jelly roll because it got really, really harsh and kind of seemed a bit cartoony. So you'll see me going over it like I am now with my mop brush and just a touch of water on there, not even really anything, just enough to give it moisture. So I could kind of blend these in, but in the future, I think I'm gonna to try to just make the highlights better from the get-go. All right, so we've reached the end of our video now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for 100 subscribers and just thank you. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.